The one tip that's in every art book that I've read is to simplify the subject. Now you might've heard this before, but a lot of people don't go into how you actually do that. So here are all of the tips that I found in these books that you can use to simplify your subject. One of the most obvious ways to simplify a painting is just to eliminate stuff that's distracting. And in this example here, this is a gouache painting of a waterfall. I left a lot of details out of this. The main focal point is this waterfall. So I decided to simplify these houses at the top. You could tell they're just like basic forms with indications of windows. We could take a look at the actual photograph and see what I've actually deleted. So here's the original photograph. You can tell that the first thing I did is I didn't paint this fence or the sign in the foreground. That'd just be way too distracting. All this industrial stuff up here, I eliminated. And if you look at these houses carefully, there's a deck and a bunch of windows and other details that I just completely left out. The fence that runs along the gorge, I left that out too, along with the foam lines. This log right here is actually kind of interesting, but in such a small painting, I'm not sure if it would really translate well, so I just eliminated it. Plus it sort of gets in the way of the motion of the water, and I didn't want to disrupt that. So in this painting, it was pretty simple for me to identify what was the focal point. It's obviously the waterfall, but other times, you might struggle to figure out what to eliminate. And that's where I recommend reading Nathan Folk's book about gouache painting. There's a lot in this book about simplifying and I like this quote, it's not possible to paint every detail you see. So ask yourself, what made you wanna paint this particular location? Identify that quality and strongly emphasize it in your painting and edit anything that might distract from it. The next tip is to focus on just one strong focal point instead of trying to include like the whole vista that's in front of you. When you're standing in front of like a gorge or something, you, you can easily get too excited about trying to include everything in the painting and that's a mistake. In this book by Heidi Jo Summers called Plain Air Painting with Oils, she discusses this exact problem. As a guide, look for a main focal point. If you're identifying three or more areas of specific interest within your subject, Perhaps you're trying to paint three paintings in one, which rarely ends well. So what she does is she promises herself that she'll do a second or third painting that will include those other subjects. Even though she might not actually get to that eventually, it just sort of calms her down and allows her to focus on the main focal point. I had to do that with this painting where I decided to paint a picnic shelter along with the tree and I realized that they were competing with each other. And I also thought too that I didn't have time to like invent figures to put in the picnic shelter. So it would just be like an empty shelter, which wouldn't be that interesting. So I just simply painted over it. You just delete these things. And that's how you simplify your paintings. I had to take a minute and think about why I chose this scene. And I realized that it was the trees. The trees are really beautiful and I like having the lake in the background. So I just painted right over the shelter. The next tip is to simplify shapes and then mask them together. And here's an example of a painting from Letchworth State Park. And I ran into an artist that approached me and we started talking about painting. And he was saying that he got into plein air painting because he was told that it will help improve his painting. And I agreed with him. I said that you can't possibly paint every single detail that you see, see in front of you. There's all those leaves, there's all these nooks and crannies on the gorge walls and stuff like that. You can't possibly paint all that. It just forces you to simplify and paint only the essential shapes. So if you look at this painting compared to the photograph, there are whole trees that are just brush strokes. And I didn't paint all the nooks and crannies that you see along the wall of the gorge. We can compare it to the photograph and you'll know what I'm talking about. So here's the photograph of Letchworth. If I zoom in here, look at all the detail that is in these gorge walls. I probably eliminated 80% of all those lines and stones. You can't possibly sit there all day and paint that in there. You can see individual tree trunks and branches and individual leaves. So he would not include all that in there. Some of these trees were represented by just like a single brushstroke. In Kevin McPherson's book called Fill Your Paintings with Light and Color, he talks about massing shapes together and gives an example of that. So you can see he didn't paint all the nooks and crannies of this mountain. He simplified the snow shapes together and then like a light area and a shadow area for the mountains. And this one is simplified even further. You can tell he made the snow shapes a little bit more bold. And he says, if there are many separate lights or shadows describing a form, link them to somehow create more simplified shapes while still maintaining your overall light and shadow pattern. So that's a pretty good tip to keep in mind when you're painting landscapes. I thought this was a fun exercise where you take a newspaper and a thick marker and just outline the bold shapes. It's kind of like doing a no tan study, which I'll talk about later. In his second book called Landscape Painting Inside and Out, he's got a good exercise in here where you turn a photograph into a mosaic. The idea here is that you take a photograph and you trace the outline of it. Then you can cut out the individual shapes 
and mix a color that you think would best represent that shape. And that's basically how you paint outdoors is you look at the shape, simplify it, and pick a color to represent it. He also says you can blur the photo in Photoshop or apply a filter to it, like the cutout filter. And that simplifies it into the basic shapes. But you might be wondering, how do you do this when you're on site? You don't have a computer with you to blur the photograph. And that leads me to the next tip, and that is to squint when you look at the scene. What that does is it simplifies everything into the basic shapes and it eliminates all the surface detail. So he says, when you squint, you're literally looking through your eyelashes. Details start to disappear and color is not apparent. All you see are the big, simple relationships of value. In other words, you see a simple statement. So in this painting demonstration at the top, he completed it within 20 minutes. This bottom image is a digital rendering of what it looks like when you squint your eyes. All the detail gets eliminated and all you see are the large patterns. That makes it much easier to paint a complicated scene. And in this example, this is a photograph of the Grand Canyon that's in color. And then he converted it to black and white to make it a little bit more simple. But the most simplest version is the black and white simple statement he made. You still get a sense that it's the same landscape, but it's much easier to render and paint. So another good way to simplify your paintings is to just limit how many colors and values you use in your painting. And in this book by Craig Nelson called 60 Minutes to Better Painting, he has a technique in here called the two value statement technique. So the idea here is that you can represent a subject by using just two colors, a highlight color and a shadow color. So for example, in this cow, this brown area is represented with a light brown color and then a darker brown color for the shadow areas. He does the same thing with the light areas of the cow too. There's like this highlight area and then he has like a more of like a darker purplish color to represent the shadows. So that's how you can handle most of the shapes in a painting, especially with like background areas in the foreground. You can see he kept that pretty simple. And then for the focal point, you can start with that two value statement. And if you need to, you can come back in and put finer details within those larger shapes. One thing that most artists recommend too is doing like thumbnail sketches that are black and white value studies. And you can use just a black marker or a couple of different shades of gray plus black to create a very simple statement. This is the Landscape Painter's Workbook by Mitchell Albella. This is a really good book about landscape painting and it has an entire section about no-tan studies. No-tan is a Japanese word that translates as light dark balance. A no-tan sketch is when you simplify a subject into the most basic shapes in solid black and white. A no-tan study can be a strong foundation to build a painting upon. Here's a good example of that. This is a no-tan study of this country road with a house on it. On the next page, he added a third value to the study on the right. The study on the left only has just five values, but it does a good job of capturing the subject. So here's a few more no-tan studies. And here's some tools you can use to create these no-tan sketches. It's much easier if you have like a broad tip marker like this one right here. Here's an example of a value sketch from Haiti Joe Summer's book. In this top example, it's just a basic line drawing and there's not enough information there to base a painting on. So she does some value studies and she created this painting based on this value sketch at the top here. So this shows you how useful these sketches can be. Those are all my tips for simplifying paintings. There's a link to those books in the description below. Up next, you can watch my short reviews of all those different books.